Welcome to Goofing Off Road. My name's Tony. When I bought this power wagon, I took it out on the dirt to see what I could do. And it's a pretty rough ride. And the back end bounces around a lot from left to right. I called up CJC Off-Road who know these trucks really well. And they suggested that for my application, I should put on the Thurin rear track bar. The track bar is a little bit longer, so the geometry is better and it stops the back end from skipping around. Let me show you how to install it. The first thing to do is take the stock track bar off. You're gonna need a 21 mil socket and ratchet, 21 mil wrenches. If you want to make it easier, an impact wrench with a 21 mil socket and a breaker bar. And if like me, you need to loosen the exhaust clamp, a 15 mil socket. I took a look underneath and I can't get a socket on the passenger side bolt, so I'm gonna have to move the exhaust out of the way before I can start. To make room to get to the bolt, undo the slip joint at the midpoint of the exhaust and then rotate it out of the way. Now that everything's out of the way, the first thing to do is remove the bolt on the driver's side. On the back side of the bolt is this flag nut. Make sure you fish it out, we're going to need it later. Then undo the passenger side bolt. Once you've taken both bolts out, you can remove the stock track bar. When you put the track bars side by side, you can see the Thurin track bar is longer. Now it's time to install the Thurin track bar. You're gonna need 19, 21, and 22 millimeter wrenches. I used a 19 and 21 mil ratcheting wrench, a pry tool and a flat bladed screwdriver, a ratchet and small extension, 19 and 21 millimeter sockets, a drill, and to make it easier, a right angled drill. A quarter, half, and 9 16 drill bits. I recommend the hard metal drill bits because they'll go through the frame easier. A center punch and a marker, a big torque wrench, and don't forget your safety glasses. The track bar comes with all the parts you need to install it. A bracket to raise one end of the track bar, all the nuts and bolts, and greasable joints on the track bar. It looks like a pretty awesome piece of kit. So I ran into a problem when I was mocking this up where the track bar fits in the bracket, but the spacer provided in the kit is too big. Fortunately, I was able to find some parts laying around in the shop that will work instead of the spacer. Unclip this breather tube from the top of the track bar bracket and remove the two plastic clips at the back and the bottom of the bracket. Take the inner bracket and slide it into place. Hold it flush against the back and then mark the place to drill the hole. Center punch the hole, start it with a quarter inch drill bit and then finish it with a half inch drill bit. You also need to put a half inch drill bit through these two holes at the bottom. When you finish drilling the holes, I recommend that you clean up the chips and metal so you're not laying in them, and then spray paint the new holes so they don't corrode. Set the Thurin brackets into the stock track bar bracket. Then loosely install the nuts and bolts. The instructions say to torque the bolt on the side to 100 foot pounds, but I wasn't able to get a torque wrench in there, so I did it up as tight as I could. Once you've got that one tight, then torque up the two bottom bolts to 100 foot pounds. If you put the bolts in correctly, the top bolt for the track bar should still be loose. Because the power wagon track bar hole was a little bit higher, we've now got to drill a new hole in the track bar bracket at this location. Mark the center of the hole and start it off with a quarter inch drill bit. With the hole drilled, get the drill bit lined up as square as you can in the hole and then drill a small witness mark for the back side of the bracket. At this point, I decided to mark where the hole needed to be. Take the bracket off, drill the hole and put the bracket in place. Now the stock track bar bolt should be able to fit through the hole in the thorough bracket. Once you've put the bracket back and torqued up all of the bracket bolts, then put the factory bolt through the new hole and torque it to 160 foot pounds. When you put the track bar in, you want the driver's side to have the grease nipple pointing up. 
and the passenger side have the grease nipple pointing down. Slide out the track bar bowl and then you can put the track bar into the top bracket. Now secure the passenger side with the stock bolt. Tighten both bolts. Then torque them both to 160 foot pounds. Now you can put the clip for the brake line underneath back into the bracket. And because the rear hole is no longer available, I zip tied the electrical wire to the brake line. Remember to put the exhaust back and tighten the clamp when you've finished. That's it, the track bar's installed. Now let's take it off-road and see if it works. So I've driven the power wagon around for a couple of days now since I had the new track bar installed. It feels so much better on the freeway on the expansion joints. And I took the power wagon to a washboard road and drove it along at about 30 or 40 miles an hour. And the back end felt a lot more in control and planted. It wasn't skipping around. So I feel like this is a really good upgrade if you have a power wagon and you're taking it off road. If you do buy this kit, check to make sure the spacer is the right size before you do the install. When I installed mine, I was in a hurry, but I'm sure if you contacted Thurin, they would give you a spacer that's the right size. I hope this video was useful. Please like and subscribe for more cool videos.